Rachel, and today on Crack Your Bible, we are going to be talking about the triune nature of both man and God. Now, before we get started, make sure you hit subscribe with the bell, with the parentheses, so that you're notified of a new gospel message, because of course, Google and Satan, they don't want you to know the gospel. Just jump through their hoops, hit subscribe with the bell, with the parentheses, and let's get started. Now, you may be saying, Rachel, I thought we were going to finish out our series about should women stay silent, to talk about Timothy and the church at Ephesus, and hmm, I was planning to, but I was getting ready and putting on my makeup and I was watching Stefan Molyneux. And for those of you who don't know, he is a YouTuber and he has a show and people call in, usually with self-inflicted problems, and then he gives them advice. And today's caller just put me in a bad mood. So I have the information ready, my body is willing, my mind says, oh, you should do it, but my heart is just not in it. Yes, I have a triune nature. You know who else has a triune nature? God has a triune nature. And the Trinity is one of these concepts that people come out of the woodwork. Oh, the Bible doesn't even say the word Trinity. Yeah, because Trinity isn't a Hebrew word. But we see throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament references to the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. You know what? The Old Testament doesn't outright say Jesus either, but we see Jesus throughout the Old Testament. We see the Spirit of God, the Ruach, throughout the Old Testament. We see it in the New Testament. And uh, it people annoy me. But you know what? We got to talk about God's triune nature because clearly people don't understand this. And I'm not just talking about people on this channel because I get people on social media and Quora and everything asking me these questions. So let's just kind of wrap this up. Let's talk about God's triune nature because I've been accused of blasphemy for saying that Jesus is God. And you, you always get these people coming out of the woodwork like a Jehovah's Witness, Jesus is a God or whatever. So let's just talk about this. Okay, I am one single human being. I'm 100% Rachel, but my body is 100% me, my mind is 100% me, and my heart is 100% me. And these three are distinct parts that even by themselves are 100% me. And you might be like, when do you ever see just one part of you? Well, if I physically die, my body over there in the morgue is 100% Rachel. That's just my body, it's separate from my mind and my heart, but it's still 100% me. What I write online represents 100% me. It's representing my mind. My mind is 100% me. Now, my emotions can only be expressed through other things. So if somebody walks into my house or they see something that I've created or even things that I like, like maybe they're listening to the music that I like, they'll say, oh, that's 100% Rachel or oh, that's so Rachel because that's my emotions being expressed separate from both my intellect and my physical body. So these things can always work in tandem and they can always work apart from each other. We see them working out of sync with each other. This is just a fact of nature and we don't even, we don't question it. It doesn't confuse us. We totally understand when your mind says no, but your body says yes and your heart says yes. We all, we all understand that. We all know what you mean when you say that. But when it comes to God and his triune nature, all of a sudden people get tripped up. They think of polytheism. They think of, oh, maybe uh, they're separate, but they're not actually God. And it just, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that there's so much confusion when we ourselves have a triune nature. Because did not God say, let us make man in our image? Because God has a triune nature, we have a triune nature. That's where our triune nature came from. You can't know God if you only accept the Father. Jesus said, I am God. You can't say you you believe in God, but then you reject Jesus because that's, that's what God is. That's what makes God, God. Without one of those things, none of this functions. If I have a body, but no, no mind or no heart, I'm physically dead. Without all the parts, you really don't know a person. This is why we always talk about how you have to have real life relationships. When people are looking at Instagram or even porn, what are they doing? They're looking at a person's body. Now, is that person's body their body? Yeah, that's 100% them. That, that's who they are. 
But by denying their triune nature, you don't really know that person. Yeah, you're with their 100% body, but that's not who they are. It's part of who they are. But you don't have the full picture because you don't know their mind. You don't know their heart. So when you only recognize that one person, we call that objectification. Okay, but what if you don't look at people online like that? Maybe you're not sexualizing the person. Well, what about on forums or even YouTube comments where you you see that person's name, you recognize their mind because you see what they have to say, but how many people are rude online? They say hateful things that they would never say to a person's face. It's because when you're face to face with somebody, not only are you recognizing their mind, you're hearing what they have to say, you hear their opinions, but you're also face to face with their physical body. And if you're rude or hateful to them, you come face to face with their emotions. Either they start crying or they yell at you. Or maybe they could even physically hate you because their emotions and their body are working in tandem. So when people are faced with only one part of who somebody is, so their mind, which is 100% them, that's who they are. Your mind is who you are. Uh, people tend to be uh, a little more brave than they would be in person because they're not recognizing who that person is. Yeah, they see an aspect of them. They see a part that is 100% them, but they don't see the full picture. You have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We talked about in other videos how Jesus is the mouthpiece of God, Logos in the New Testament. You see that the Spirit is the Parakletos, which is the helper or the advisor, and he comforts us. And then you have the Father, Abba, the Aramaic word Abba in the New Testament, and he holds everything together. They all have distinct purposes. They're all separate, but they all make up one God. Even when they are physically apart, they still make up one God. Even when the things that I do stand on their own, they're separate. I'm still just one Rachel. I have one body, I have one mind, and I have one heart. I am a triune person. I have three distinct parts. They can be in conflict with each other. They can believe the same thing. And I'm still one Rachel. We have one God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They can be separate and they're still 100% God. They can be together, and they're still one God. We see that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We see in Jeremiah 3.19, God describes himself as Israel's father. We see in Hosea 11.1 1, that he's bringing his son out of Egypt. Who is that son? Jesus. Because, uh, hey, remember Jesus went down to Egypt to get away from Herod? So we also have in Genesis 1-2, we have the Spirit of God, the Ruach Elohim. He's fluttering over the face of the deep. So God can have separate functions, separate parts, separately, all God, together, all God. It still makes up one God. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. It's not as confusing as people make it out to be. And no, we're not polytheists. No, Jesus is not some lesser being. Jesus is God. The Father is God. The Holy Spirit is God because there is only one God. They are three distinct parts that are all one God. Even on their own, they're still one God. God. That's all that I wanted to share with you today. We will get back on track with our series next week and we will be talking about Abraham on Monday and then we'll get to everything else on Wednesday and Friday. So I'd love it if you would like, subscribe, and share. Make sure to check out a playlist because we do have to put on the full armor of God every day to take a stand against the schemes of the devil. So check that out before you go and I will see you on Monday. Bye!